workflow if, if we so want to. We can also set it up to continuously run uh, with Azure Automation so that we have a uh, consistent uh, view that for the past five weeks, our security checks have been all the time this, and after the build uh, that, that Alan put in last night, all the security checks went like this. So we have clear visibility uh, on, on the status of uh, uh, are we on par with the standards that we want and are we drifting away from that. And of course there's integration with uh, log analytics, so the o OMS side uh, and, and, uh, and actually even, even some other parts as well. So this is how you typically use these things. So uh, if we start from number one over here, so we actually have the simplest place to get started is actually uh, to install the AZ SDK PowerShell modules. Uh, from that, we actually get the commandlets, uh, which are just helpers for us, but we actually get also the security rules, the security verification tests, uh, that are signed by Microsoft. We know that these are the latest and greatest. They are getting updated each month, actually. So we know, we know that just if we just update these, we are actually getting also checks from all of the new services or all of the new features that are available uh, in, in when, when our platform changes. So for example, now that we have uh, storage, we talked about storage in the panel. So now that storage actually supports uh, VNets or storage supports uh, HTTPS uh, enforcing or uh, transparent uh, encryption uh, enforcing. Uh, so now we can actually check those also using these tests. We don't have to go and uh, build our, our own new tests for the new features that are available for storage. We can just update the test pool set that is being built by Microsoft. So they probably uh, also want to update their test to take care of the uh, new feature from uh, new Azure, Azure services. So that makes sense. And then if we move forward, uh, we actually have the uh, security in intelligence feature or plugin actually available from, from Visual Studio Marketplace. Uh, and, uh, and also also the plugin for or extension for VSTS as well. Uh, then, there's, then, then there's actually the the, co the JSON files, they are simply human readable JSON files, the rule sets. They are pretty easy to follow, pretty easy to replicate. Currently, we are not able to extend the existing ones really well. So we basically get a fixed set, fixed set of tests from Microsoft from these uh, PowerShell modules. Uh, they get downloaded to our app data folder. Uh, they are signed, so we know they are to be trusted. But that also means that we can't really go and add a new test or remove an, a test that doesn't make sense to us as well. Uh, and of course, then there's the reporting, the exporting of the data. There are automatic reports, there's integration to different services, and, uh, and there's lots of new, st new stuff that, uh, that we can use to visualize our results there as well. Uh, I won't go through this uh, more. You'll get the slides uh, later. But just as a, as, a, as a tip, when you have the latest Azure PowerShell tools installed and when you run the install module AZ SDK, uh, then you're basically done. For most systems, I actually had to also add the allow clobber um, uh, flag there as well. It's basically getting some conflicts uh, with, with the latest Azure RM tools as well. So we basically had to reinstall the Azure, uh, Azure uh, RM tools when we do the installation of the Agent SDK as well. No biggie. So part one, subscription security. Uh, there's plenty of stuff available. I won't read through all of these for you. What do they mean? There's good documentation available. Uh, there are ways of uh, using these predefined Microsoft own predefined uh, policies so that when you start up a new subscription, you can actually use these tools that to set these up. So there's, for example, for Azure Security Center, there are pre-made policies so that you don't actually have to go out manually tick down all of the boxes from Security Center and think about what are important, what are not. 
you can just run the set uh, or actually set up subscription security uh, uh, commandlet from agent SDK, and then it actually does all of these for us, including uh, checking the uh, setting actually the az Azure Security Center that it's on, that it has the correct policies, uh, and it has our email and uh, uh, and if you are in the states, the SMS, uh, the phone number as well. And there, then there are good stuff related to uh, uh, policies. Not many uh, Azure services covered yet, so there are like SQL database, storage, couple of those available from for policies. So, uh, so we'll get some new uh, features for them as as time goes. But then there is the important stuff here. This is the least intrusive one here. So these are all things that uh, make sense to us if we are setting up a new subscription, because then we, then it doesn't matter if we add a new policy that maybe says that you cannot create a certain type of resource or where we add a resource lo lock to some something else. Uh, but if you want to just check check our current. Uh, security uh, footprint, how are we doing, how well are, are things here? The health check is actually the way to go here. So we can actually run a simple script, uh, Azure uh, subscription security health check, and it runs through 20 or so different checks uh, for that subscription. How, well, how, well, how is it set up? What are the access control? What, what are you doing there? Uh, and we get a nice result from it. And that's really not intrusive. <coughs> Anybody can do it with even during this session to their own subscriptions because you only need the reader rights. We don't uh, change anything from there. Uh, a sample from, uh, from those uh, tests that we run, uh, I just want to highlight there are plenty of the tests. We actually stage them so that some of them are rated as critical tests. Some of them are rated as medium or high impact tests. And uh, for most of them, we actually have the ability to uh, go really deep and have the auto fix uh, script generated for us as well. So if it's something that a machine can really understand, we uh, will actually get not just a link on how to fix this, not just a link to documentation or stuff like that, uh, or not just a response that please fix this, we'll actually get a nice script uh, that we can run to fix those findings if you so want to. Uh, of course, with common sense reading, what does it actually do? Uh, uh, but some of those are actually uh, more uh, like human tasks, action points. So we have uh, findings like you have to justify all of your, um, all of your uh, subscription owner level accounts so, or the old co-admin accounts. So that's more for you to do within within your team say that okay we have uh, for example four which is fine by the script because the script checks whether whether or not there's under five of those admins but does it make sense internally H how do what do we do have to do there so the result might be that you have to verify it manually as well and uh, let's actually see how that goes All right, I'm really not the productivity guy there, but let's zoom in a little bit. Well, actually, I had it had it already here. So uh, this is just very simple. I have a new, fresh, fresh machine set up. I've I have really done nothing else here than just pull up a new image uh, from Azure. Uh, just a new VM, uh, it has PowerShell uh, installed, of course. I've added the Azure PowerShell tools and I've added the Agent SDK tools. And uh, what do I actually have to do in order to run this subscription health scan is actually pretty simple after, after that. So it's actually Zoom in. Uh, very simple. So uh, after all of those logins, logins and uh, all of that, uh, and after I select my right subscription, of course, this is really the stuff that I had to do. I had this module from the get uh, from the agent SDK. So it's just get agent SDK subscription security status 
uh, and I can scope it uh, within the specific subscription or all of the subscriptions that I have access to. Uh, uh, pretty neat indeed. And let's see if my login is still there. Probably not. I just installed a new, started a new PowerShell instance. Yes, I. This is that cumbersome, but let's do this again. So the interactive login again. Too fast for my VM. As I'm using my MSDN account, so let's go with the personal one. And no uh, MFA because security, I don't need that. So once we're in, uh, we can select the uh, specific subscription uh, that we want, want to use. And now that we've done that, now we can actually go and use, do the subscription health scan that we just wanted to do. Uh, it's pretty simple. As I said, we only need the, uh, we only need the reader rights to my subscription. I'm running the latest 2.6.1, which came basically end of end of uh, September. So we have a couple of more tests uh, available in this uh, AZ SDK release. But as you see, as it goes, it's, it's pretty fast. There's only like 20 or so different tests that it runs. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fast. And we can actually leave, oh, completed analysis. Okay, so let's, let's see what, what the output is because it's actually relatively there we go. Uh, quick summary. So this many tests pa passed, failed, etc. And we get open up, bumped up actually the all of all of the logs here. We have the logs as ver very detailed logs in there. But this is basically the gist. We get a very simple security report with all of those tests. Uh, it's just a CSV file, basically with all of the controls in there. What is the control? Did I pass? Did I fail? Uh, what is the severity? Does it support auto fix that I mentioned? Uh, and this is now the more more, more interesting part. So what is what does this control actually mean? Uh, and how would I actually go and fix this thing? So the recommendation. Now some of them actually make more sense. So some of them are, you know, run command remove remove Azure RM role assignment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Very specific. Some of them are more. Uh, you need to address all active alerts on Azure Security Center or verify the list of five public IP addresses used and delete the unwanted and unused ones immediately. So very good thing that this specific control doesn't support auto fix. Great. Uh, so this is the subscription health scan. You can go and run this thing on your own as you want. And I'm actually going, going on and starting the uh, security verification test as well because this takes a little bit longer time and while it runs we can actually go on and uh, see what this thing actually is. Okay, just a sec. There we go. Oh yeah, uh, before we go back to see the security verification tests, uh, because we jumped from the subscription uh, part of the whole AGIT SDK, now we are going to the developing side. And before we go and see the verification tests, let's see about the security intelligence as well. So if you didn't know about it, great, you learned something new. Uh, so this is really just as easy and install a new plugin except really works only on Visual Studio 2015. Why? Why? I have no idea. But luckily for us, uh, luckily for me, I'm really slow on updating my VS. So I have this here. This is just a sample that's actually you can download from AGT SDK site. And so this is just a 
project that they've done everything wrong, everything. So this is just a good way to see what does this actually look like. So uh, here. Yes, yes. So this is, this is what I was talking about selling to financial customers. Yes, that's it. So, so this is, for example, a uh, really great one. This is actually uh, this actually would fail the build. So uh, we have the warnings, we have the recommendations. Uh, the recommendations, of course, they don't they don't fail fail it yet, but they have on the roadmap on on kind of ways of setting up so that you just can't build anything without actually addressing these concerns because they, these are not rocket science really so uh so stuff like i'm allowing for https or http uh, or https not really really wise uh so shared access so we are getting here we are on the storage sample so we are accessing azure blob storage we are creating actually a new sas token uh and uh, here we are grading it for 24 hours, which is quite long. So here we are, we, we get a warning that says, use shortest possible token lifetime appropriate for the scenario and see what, see what happens. Uh, there's great ones here as well. Uh, if, if you use ADAL, please use ADAL. Uh, there's great uh, tooling here or helpful uh, intelligence here for that as well. Uh, there's even, I promised to do a service bus uh, <laughs> mentioned in my demo. So let's see if I can actually find my mouse and see when it, there it is. There should be the crypto AppSec general. Where's my service bus? Let's open it from here. Uh, it's pretty simple. Again, dealing with the, the uh, de dealing, dealing with uh, the authentication tokens. Uh, there is just just a very simp simple simple. Uh, we are uh, creating a authentication token for uh, service bus relay, and basically, what we are doing here is nothing fits on the screen really. But yeah, so we are getting warning here. It is safe, unsafe to use the relay client authentication type dot none, obviously, because it allows clients to connect to the relay without authentication makes kind of sense uh, but if we don't have this uh, in our intelligence it might be or if we allow this to go through uh, without seeing it in our build logs uh, most likely when we first get it working uh, it's very likely especially if you're new to the platform and especially if you struggle with all of the different changes most likely you won't, won't come back to this and, and see how this this uh, would be actually done better. So it's great that we have this level stuff here as well. And then there's uh, warnings for uh, lower, low or really low uh, bit uh, key length crypto and stuff like that. Really great, getting updated all the time. Really recommend if you still use the Visual Studio 2015, I really recommend you use, uh, use that as well. And again, for reference, uh, all, all, all of the tests that are currently uh, in the 2.6.1 AZ SDK. Now, the security verification test. So similarly, this is now uh, similar to subscription health scan. This is really non-intrusive. So this is re really something that e each and every one of us in the room can run in our own subscriptions without breaking anything. It just reads the current status of, of, uh, uh, of our services and sees what have we done right, what have we done wrong, basically. Um, and, uh, and this is really useful from anything from auditing an existing solution to running it all the time during our whole production uh, life cycle. Uh, they're currently uh, the most used Azure Platform as a Service components. They are available, and as I mentioned, it uh, actually supports uh, directly the security center. So we actually get all of that security <coughs> cent center information here in the one place uh, as well. And let's go back to our uh, demo machine. Um, yes, here we go. So uh, our de demo machine actually has finished running the 
get AZ Azure ser Service Security Status. Uh, and I'm again running this within the scope of the whole subscription. Uh, but if, if I wanted to, I could actually run this in the scope of the whole uh, or specific resource group, resource, resource group uh, by specific name or by specific type. So if, for example, somebody says that there's this new feature in storage that we need to really find out that all of the, uh, from all of our subscriptions, from all of our storage accounts, have we actually checked this specific uh, security uh, feature, this is one way of doing doing that uh, within the agent SDK. And uh, let's see, it doesn't look that bad. Uh, nine passed, 16 failed, seven manual or verify yourself and 12 manual ones. And out of the 16 that failed, 11 of those are high impact uh, impact tests. So let's see what, what's, what's going on here. Um, which one was it? There we go. So again, this is now a little bit larger. This this is for let let's see how many different different types of resources are there. Let's actually do a little bit of format formatting here in, here in first, so that we have a little bit better. Oh, really not a productivity person. Yes, my table has headers. There we go. All right, this is a little bit better. So. Now we, we actually see that we had a really simple environment. There was a, a storage account, uh, a VM, and the, v, uh, the VNet, of course. This is actually now the same subscription de where this demo machine sits in. So I'm really checking the security of my VM and the environment from within the VN, VM, but actually I'm just checking for the security of how, it's it, how it is set up from the Azure point of view, not from the VM point of view. Very meta. Uh, and let's do it a little bit more simple and select just the storage. And uh, let's select just one storage uh, account so that we don't have too much noise in here, here available. And uh, let's actually hide some, some things here and let's do it a little bit simpler. Okay. Uh, a dozen or so tests related to storage. Uh, I get a nice status code, passed, failed, verify yourself, manual, 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 uh, and the severity uh, of those uh, results or the, or the of those tests. Uh, doesn't look that good, so let's see what's happening there. So for example, uh, failed, Azure storage, uh, encryption at rest, not enabled. So this is now the new feature that's available in uh, Azure Storage that I can actually go and see that uh, what does it tell me. So again, the control, please do encrypt your data at rest. And actually, quite simple, we actually get a nice ish <laughs> uh, command that we can go and run. We can actually ha have that, we actually have the uh, PowerShell command that we can go go and run uh, this uh, against our storage account so that we actually get this uh, this fixed. And when we run this whole script again, maybe automatically, maybe manually after mitigating this uh, these security issues, uh, we'll actually get a nice pass uh, in this this report. So pretty nice stuff. And as, as I mentioned, you can really get uh, started doing this uh, for basically any of your uh, solutions as well. But what if Excel or, or CSV isn't enough? What if uh, all of these deta more detailed logs isn't enough? So what's interesting is that we now, that now also have with the latest release um, a new feature uh, where we can actually generate the PDF, a PDF report for all from all of this as well. Uh, and for some reason they ask for the orientation there as well. Uh, but now we can actually go and select, do the same security uh, health scan that we did because it's a little bit faster. And uh, now instead of the just having the Excel uh, and just having the output logs, we actually get also uh, a nice, nice report uh, PDF generated there as well. And we saved a lot of uh, writing from this security audit that we just did. And boom, it's done, completed analysis. They're just generating the uh, 
uh, PDF, actually, actually using, uh, I believe, using Word, Word engine. So it's it's taking a little bit time there, but it should pop up here uh, anytime soon for us. And we can just go and see see it's already here from the from my backup just in terms of time. Really nice. Uh, who did this with what script? Where do I get help? Uh, what are all of the tests? The same things that we did. How did they go on? Uh, and more more detailed uh, uh, logs from all of this. And this is now again because this is a PDF thing. We can seal this thing. We can sign it. We can say this is really the result. This is this integrity of this test is clear. So we can seal, seal this in a vault and say that at this point of time, this is how our environment looks like. And please give us the compliance uh, check mark or please give us the uh, go uh, or green or whatever terminology we are using. All right. There we go. Uh, just some notes again for your reference. We do quite a, quite ni te nice tests for most of the infrastructure as a service and a dozen or so, uh, actually close to 20 or so different platform as a service components as well. Uh, for the VNet side, really quite nice checks that we go, go and do, do here. Uh, go and write a manual log for all of the VPN gateways. Uh, what else? Uh, there must not be any network security uh, on the gateway, subnet, obviously, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this was the storage, so really great stuff. Uh, are we using HTTPS enforcement? Uh, are we restrict uh, IP whitelisting the tokens, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Really, literally the best practices of, of all of the services that we, we can uh, we, we that we can cover using this. Well, some of these are really uh, like sales pitches for Microsoft uh, services. So there is stuff like uh, enforce uh, or use georeplication and the minimum georeplication for everything is the GARS, which is the most expensive storage type. Or for, for web apps, we have like use the high availab availability configuration, which only comes with uh, premium, I, gu I guess, or nevertheless, the, a little bit more expensive tiers there as well. And then uh, they do cost, but as they are a set of best practice, then you can actually bring these results to your stakeholders that we discussed on the panel. And you can say that, okay, this, this is how our security posture looks like. Green, 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 red, 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 red. Uh, this will be the cost to actually mitigate this. Do you want to do this? please record this, please sign here that you didn't want to, and there we go. Then your job is done. Now it's your manager's problem. Uh, or then you can say, yes, I've ticked this security thing and now we're good, we are secure. Maybe not right. That was the demo as well. All right, a uh, little bit running short on, short, short on time here, so let's see what uh, interesting stuff we still have coming on there. So now what we did is we just ran the specific tests uh, we looked at them uh, on the CSV side. We saw that there were plenty of logs available there as well. But how can we integrate this for different systems there as well? Well, uh, event hubs come in as well. So we can actually put all of this data back in uh, into the event hub. So instead of sending the result into um, uh, into just a storage account or just my machine that where I run this thing, I can actually pipe this thing into my uh, event hub um, as well. And here it is, uh, just as promised, uh, when we are wa here watching this, the same test that we run, ran previously, uh, now here's the Azure subscription classic resources. Are we using presence of uh, the ASM type of, so the co-admins or all of this, uh, all of this uh, old, older, generation pre-ARM resources. 
and really recommendation for all of this, please do migrate them to our <coughs> ARM uh, as well. And we can also hook this up also to webhooks. See what I did there. And uh, we can actually basically pipe the same test results at the same time to both the webhook and also to the uh, event hub there as well. And once we do that, and once we have set up the, as I mentioned, there's the setting up the subscription security for new subscriptions, uh, that actually spawns up uh, a thon, like a over a hundred uh, Azure <coughs> monitor or Azure resource manager activity log alerts and actually sets those up. So I can, uh, when I run this thing, it's just a one line of PowerShell for me, but actually all of the uh, events that are done in the, in the scope that are set those policies up, so for example, the whole subscription, all of those events get now recorded and logged and alerted into my Azure Activity Log Alert. Then what I, what I can do, instead of just listening to the emails or, or SMSs, I can pipe them into whatever area I want. Uh, from Activity Log Alerts, I can also have uh, webhooks, so here I have a Slack bot actually writing tons and tons and tons of stuff uh, around uh, all of the operations that, that are being done uh, in my subscription. And here's my colleague Rami doing uh, stuff. Here's um, what's this? all of these are activity log alerts, uh, informational level. So I'm getting everything here. There's huge amount of noise uh, in this uh, Slack bot uh, every after each second, but you know, list keys to document DB database accounts. Uh, five <laughs> different different alerts from ju from just that. Maybe not most use useful uh, usage of of Slack, but you never know. Just as a proof of concept, so that you can actually plug really this in into anything. Good. So, a couple of points to note here. So, this is a great tool set. You can get started. You can <coughs> tick your security box uh, of, of Azure. We've done this security review. I've done this security audit. Please, here's this PDF report that's available. You know, we have a document that says security status is this. Okay, please let me go now. That's fine. That's okay. But uh, let's take it a little bit upper upper level as well. We started in the panel this discussion that it's okay to have all of these different features of Azure, uh, and it's, so it's nice that we can define more security on accessing to Azure. But, but really, that's, that's like, uh, in, in, in more, more traditional sense, that will be covering the administrative access. So giving access to Azure is literally like giving you, first of all, the keys and also the bulldozer to run and do anything in your data center. And also basically a limitless credit card as well to order everything that you want in that data center. And that's really how a, uh, an access to Azure is. It's unlimited administrative access. All of these things that we do in ARM, in, in, uh, in the monitoring side, in the policy side, that's all mitigating the risks related to administrative access. And we have to go inside uh, our own application code. How, how does our application talk to the database? How, does our, how do we authenticate, authorize our users, et cetera? There are great tools related to uh, mitigating external attacks uh, in Azure. There's the new DDoS prediction service that's coming in, uh, al only available in the States at the moment, but there's great tooling from Azure related to that as well. But really, nothing really beats the kind of you sitting together with your colleagues who are building the application and actually doing the threat modeling exercises that you were supposed to do when you were building this thing. So there's, there's great resources on the Microsoft side. You can look up Stride. Uh, you can look, look up if you want to do a more interactive experience. One part of Stride is the Stride threat modeling is the elevator elevation of privilege. There's actually a nice card game related to uh, the elevation of privilege uh, that lets you threat model your existing architecture of your application and see what kind of uh, elevation of privilege type of attacks can you find and how <laughs> would you mitigate 
uh, those in your application. Uh, but really, in the end, uh, it's all about the defense in depth. So adding layers and layers of layers of different controls uh, on between your process data and any possible type of attack uh, that there could be. And as I mentioned, uh, the results that come in there uh, from the Microsoft's own specific uh, tests that we, we are reusing now, as I said, we are not customizing them at the moment, we are just using what's in there. So we had to really carefully see that, okay, does this specific control make sense financially or otherwise in our specific application? So this is not the golden standard, this is just, just what Microsoft does and we might or might not be uh, having the same regulatory requirements, for example. Uh, it really is getting updated all the time, so the team actually releases new stuff each month. The latest additions really uh, this month were the ability to generate these PDF reports and also the automatic fixing scripts there as well. So uh, looking, looking pretty good, I'm, I'm confident that uh, we are having a lot of new great stuff coming into this uh, product as well. Microsoft is not even internally using this for 100% of their applications yet. So this came out, or Microsoft came out with, up, out with this in around midsummer time this year, and they say that they have close to 30% of their applications covered. They are targeting 100% by the end of this calendar year. So they have uh, probably at least 31% covered at the moment. And then, as we have time, this is what I get asked uh, quite a lot of times. So it's great that we have this tooling related to security. Uh, whose job is it? And uh, then we get to the whole, what is DevOps? Who, who is doing what? Is, is my job going to be gone? Am I doing the job of three people with a salary of one? That so basically, the same person can do all of these. They just switch the hat if they want, depending on the team, depending on you know, your approach to DevOps as well. Uh, these, are, these are actually uh, just general recommendations. Don't take these uh, as, uh, as kind of uh, golden rules either. But, but really, depending on your mode of governing your own subscriptions, do you only have one? Do you have a huge enterprise with tens, maybe different subscriptions? There's different access control that you do, etc. But remember, uh, you can check the security status, to scan the health of the security without giving access to anything else than just reader role for that specific scope. So you can do both the subscription level health scan and the security verification tests for all different Azure services uh, without giving uh, too much access to anybody. So that can be a in turn, that can be an automated tool that goes on and logs our status of the day. And uh, then the value really comes from that when we have for the whole year, we have 52 reports for each week, one for each week, that how does our security posture look like over time? What has changed? Uh, what are we missing there? That's also a great way to measure your effective effectiveness of your team. So instead of just velocity, instead of just number of bugs found or squashed, uh, you can also measure number of security fixes or security additions or number of checkboxes that are now green in your security reports. Uh, for the devs, the most easiest thing, use the uh, security intelligence. It doesn't add mu that much yet, but there are already a couple of, I think, 30, 40, 50 different tools that we are checking against. And there are always good additions like Especially if you're onboarding a new team, maybe a, a, a more junior team, stuff like, hey, do not use this, this type of a random generator uh, is uh, quite nice to have already in line in your code from the intelligence. And you can also use, use uh, most of these tests uh, when, when you actually integrate within your CI CD, there's support for Jenkins, there's support for VSTS, etc. What else? Yes, do start to think about this thing as security, as kind of continuous security or continuous compliance. So not just one state of security that this was what we had 
maybe fix those things, run it again and say, this is now what we have and that's it. Everything is changing, you're coding your stuff to your application, the applications or the services underneath are changing all the time. So you really need to have visibility of how you are doing over time. I cannot stress this uh, enough. And then we are in the end. So do try it out, just go to GitHub or just use your favorite search engine uh, to find this out, AZSDK. Uh, it's pretty simple on github.com slash AZSDK and then, then you're there. <laughs> uh, basically there are some docs available. It's just a matter of uh, installing the right PowerShell modules and uh, really when you start uh, using the more intrusive ones like the uh, enforcing new policies or en creating new alerts, then maybe try it first on your, you know, demo account or your v v MSDN subscription. There's great stuff that you can find out. The team is really supportive. Uh, you can hook them uh, or send them an email uh, uh, on the on the list. They they answer pretty well. There's a great uh, showcase, IT showcase. Uh, so Microsoft case study available on that, how Microsoft internally uses that. And there's also a great and always updated set of resources uh, related to what types of controls are recovering. So even though uh, you are not using this kit to check all of the security posture, you can just go and say, what does Microsoft recommend that you check against? That's already pretty neat, even if you don't do anything uh, as formal as, as this thing. So with that, I thank you, and then it's up to the questions. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. So the question was that, is there a way to, sorry? Yeah, for follow-up basically. Yeah, so good question. So I'm just going to repeat it for the uh, recording as well. So the question was about uh, automatic automating the se follow-up on the security reports. And really there's two pieces. So currently, if you just want to use the generated CSV or the gener generated PDF, obviously, yes, you can just put it in your I don't care, Dropbox, Git, whatever that you use. You can, if you if you deploy build or kind of, if you put your build artifacts somewhere, you can just put them to the same place as well, because as I mentioned, you can just integrate all of these tests for your, uh, maybe even integration tests re really, because some of these tests are really quite, quite fast. So you can just integrate these reports with your pipeline over there and just go from there as, as you do with your other logs. You can just put all of this data in, in the OMS. There's straight away connector for that. There is, you can then have your dev guy, uh, business, business guy or security guy look at that and create the report they want. It's, it's up to them. You can always just manually spend a week working on the Excel file as well. Great job security really. And uh, you can hook it, up, hook it up to the to event hub. You can hook it up to the webhook. Uh, really up to you. It's really extensible on, on that side. Yes. 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 Good question. So, all of these different Azure security related services, which one should I use and is this replacing something? Uh, luckily for this specific uh, set of tools, the answer is no. This is not replacing anything. This is using uh, exactly the existing reports from those services. So, for example, uh, if we if we go and look up the report on the report on the uh, resource group that I run, the SVTs uh, here here actu actually in the Excel. If we well, let's not do any formatting. Like let's just open up the report. So uh, virtual machine. Uh, where we are, storage, 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 VNet, VNet, virtual machine. Oh, uh, here in the first. So these 
Some of these are questions to the specific service. Some of these are questions to the Azure Resource Manager activity log alerts, which is using Azure Monitor. Some of these are questions uh, or polls to uh, Security Center. So here we are actually polling, is there the anti-mail malware installed? That's actually a question to Security Center. Uh, here we are questioning that uh, have we done anything to the, uh, ha have we kind of reacted to all of the recommendations from Azure Security Center directly from here? Uh, where else do we have Security, cen security Center? Uh, there, there, there are sever several uh, in integration points to Security Center, specifically on the VM side for this. This just combines all of those together and adds a uh, set, set of kind of best practices uh, from each specific service. Like Security Center is available for on-prem, uh, yes, but for VMs, let's not talk about the stack. It doesn't do anything for my Azure Platform as a Service components. It doesn't know what to do with, you know, app service. It doesn't know what to do with, I don't know, function, service bus. This kit actually, or these questions or these tests that we run, they are just JSON. JSON. Uh, they are nothing new. You can just run all of these questions from PowerShell by yourself. This is just a way of automating this, and this is your way of trusting Microsoft that they have in this monthly updated set of tests uh, and the tooling that they give you, that this is a really great starting point to see that this is everything that I need to cover because it's already a lot of work to cover all of this all the time. So this is a really great, to great, great way to get started with this new cloud security thing as well. Very good question. So can we extend these rules? The answer at the moment is no. It in the previous version that was, uh, so this was launched in summer. So uh, previously the rules that came in, it's just power, I installed them from PowerShell. I can actually go into my app data folder and see the rules, they're just JSON. Now actually since two months ago, they are signed. So uh, I cannot modify them at all, but I'm told, I have a feeling that they might be having uh, M might be adding extensibility there as well. A good example is that when I actually run these tests, uh, they are actually saying that I'm running this using the org neutral policy. One would assume based on this data that Microsoft IT has their own policy and one would assume that I could actually use that similar approach later on as well. Very good question. Currently the extensibility or customizing the rules tests is that these are the ones that I don't need. <laughs> Great. Anything else? We are right on time. Thank you.